Hello, everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, September 23rd. Your co-moderators are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffitt, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. Thanks to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for us. Today's topic is Spark Creativity in Your Classroom with Adobe Spark with our special guest, Suzanne Sally. I'm going to turn the mic over to Kim Thomas, who will now introduce Suzanne and ask her the newbie question. Good morning, everybody. I am so honored to be able to introduce Suzanne. Not only is she a dear friend, she is somebody that I have admired for years. She's a wife, a mom, a grandma. She does all that. She's a technology integration specialist in this Creighton School District. She's been in the classroom. She is also, because there's just not enough going on in her life, I guess, she is the president-elect for ASTE, which is the ISTE affiliate here in Arizona. She's an Apple Learning Specialist, a Google certified trainer and a Seesaw ambassador. Whew, I don't know. I'm tired just reading it off here. So our newbie question, and I'm afraid I don't see that in front of me, so could I ask you to flip? There we go. Why are visual creation tools important for students and teachers? Suzanne, I'm going to turn it over to you, but not without saying again, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Well, thank you, Kim. I am so excited to be here today and um, and share a little bit with you about Adobe Spark. If you're familiar with it, I hope that you'll learn something new. And if not familiar, I hope you'll learn a lot. So in response to our question, um, I just wanted to say, I, you know, I often hear people say, well, I'm a visual learner. And we know there's other types of learners, but I really think that we're all visual learners. We remember pictures and Im images well beyond the words that we hear. You know, they grab our attention, they trigger our thoughts, memories, and learning. And I think when students and adults craft well thought out visuals, it enhances their own learning and memory as well as that of those viewing their creations. So today I'm going to share this great Adobe Spark tool that you, your coworkers, and your students can use to help create some of those beautiful visuals. So what is Adobe Spark? Um, we're going to learn it's a suite of three different tools, and we're going to learn a little bit more about that as we go along. Um, let's see. I kind of liked this quote, creativity is contagious, pass it on. It's been attributed to Albert Einstein, although that's a little bit of controversy. But whoever did the quote, I think it's a great one. And we do need to pass on our creative productions. So I always like to start out my presentations talking about the ISTE standards for students. Um, if you're not familiar with ISTE, that's the International Society for Technology and Education. And they really do create standards that are used all over the world, uh, world as we talk about technology. Um, so standard one, empowered learner, helps provide choice and tools that they're going to use. And Adobe Spark definitely does that for our students. Um, it addresses digital citizenship because there are Creative Commons licensed images built right into Adobe Spark. And we'll be talking about that some more. It addresses that innovative designer as students create and remix projects into different innovative solutions. And it addresses that creative communicator because students can express themselves and share their learning, understanding, and creativity using Adobe Spark. So what is Adobe Spark? And I've said a little bit about that already. But there's also, we talked about creativity. And there's a lot of studies out there that say that creativity helps improve learning outcomes. And additionally, we know we're preparing our students for a world where many employers are going to be looking at creativity in their potential hires. And this is one way to get kids thinking that way and using that and creating. So Adobe Spark is a suite of three different tools that your students and you can use to ignite storytelling, um, researching re research reports, public service announcements, um, beautiful graphics, videos, ways to share ideas, and so much more. And keep in mind, it's a graphic design tool. But no design expertise is needed. 
it's best of all free and compatible with all different types of devices. And I know in my district, we have students using Adobe Spark. We have teachers and, and staff using Adobe Spark. As a matter of fact, our communications director uses Adobe Spark page for our weekly um, Creighton Connection newsletter that is sent out to everyone. So I mentioned that it can be used on all devices. It can be used on desktop computers, laptops, Chromebooks, and even on iOS devices, iPads, and iPhones. Um, for computer users, Spark runs right inside your web browser. You just go to spark.adobe.com to ex access all three of the Spark formats, post, page, and video. On iOS devices, iPads and iPhones, there are three Adobe Spark apps, one for each of the formats, and they're all free. I have never, I personally have not tried creating something on my iPhone, but I recently did a presentation this summer, and one of the attendees that was in the um, presentation was not registered. He was just there attending with his wife, and he didn't have a device with him other than his iPhone. He went in, downloaded the app, and created something right there. He was so surprised to hear that. Um, it's also all of your creations in Adobe Spark will sync across all of your devices. So if you start a project at school on a school device, you can also access, access that at home on a, on a personal device, whether it be a, a laptop, Chromebook, or iOS device. So it's best to hear, you can hear a lot from me about this, but I like hearing from teachers how they're using this. So we're going to watch a little video from a fourth grade teacher sharing how her kids are engaging with Adobe Spark. It lets her kids make their words and stories come to life. It helps nurture their creativity and their digital literacy. But they're also learning some great presentation skills that they're going to be able to use for their whole life. Um, they easily create and share narrated videos, eye-popping graphics, and engaging web stories in minutes. Intuitive, fast, and fun. So in a minute, the video is going to pop up on your screen, and you'll just click play. We'll watch that video, and then we'll come back together in a few minutes. Note, if you are on an iPad right now, the video is not going to be available, but you will be able to access it later on through the links in the Live Binder. My students this year are amazing. They love to learn. They are ready for anything. I am always looking for new ways for them to be able to demonstrate their knowledge, new things for them to use. I love Adobe Spark because it keeps my students completely engaged. It's also intuitive, so it's not difficult for them to jump right in. It is endless what I can do with this. We can do it for history. We can even do it for science experiments and investigations. We decided to make a Spark video about what makes fourth grade awesome. In fourth grade, we did show art. I got to Probably the biggest reason they love it is because they can personalize it. There is a lot of choice involved. Every single person's is totally unique. The voice, the pictures, the icons, the text. They also can choose a variety of themes for their video. It really gives them a feel of they are truly making a movie. It's so much more than just a paper. It's an entire experience that people can watch. We love The Lion King, and in the play, I was a hyena. I love the fact that they can use their voices, bringing life to what they actually have written. It makes it so personal to them. They can use it at home. They can work on it no matter where they are. They can share with their family and their grandparents and their classmates. It's really nice to be able to give them a glimpse into what their children are doing during the day, what they're learning. I think what I love most about my job is when they know that they have learned something and that they own it, and they're like, oh, I got it. It's me. I'm always trying to make learning fun and exciting and engaging. And when I'm using Adobe Spark, it's fun to learn it. It's fun to share what we've learned. It's fun.
Okay, great. I hope you enjoyed that. I, I think that's just a great video that gives us a great overview of Adobe Spark. Um, I, I wanted to share a little bit about how students would be using Adobe Spark in the classroom. And um, I always have keep in mind safety for our students. And Adobe Spark is doing that too. So we're going to talk about that a few minutes. Um, so it is being used all over the world from kindergarten through 12th grade and up into higher education. And as I mentioned, we have adults using it in our district to share thoughts, ideas, um, reflect on their learning, same things we would ask our students to do. It does require an account to use Adobe Spark. You can create an account with an email login or use a Google account. Um, so a couple of details about student accounts. And this comes directly from Adobe and their EDU guide, their education user guide. So option one is if you have students that are 13 or over, so that's like eighth grade and up here in the States, um, you can use a district created and managed um, Google for Education, a G Suite for Education account um, for your students to log in or an email account. That's for 13 and over. Right now, if you have students that are under 13, Adobe, Adobe's recommendation is that the teacher creates a classroom account and logs all of the students into that account. Um, the benefit for that is, and I've heard this from teachers that are doing this, they like having that classroom account because they can see everything that is being created. It's all in one place for them to view and share and help the kids do any editing or revising that they need to do. But let's look at some other ways that Adobe helps to keep our students safe. If you go into, so one of the things that I do as a technology integration specialist is I do look at tools and what's appropriate. I'm in a K-8 district and I really need to be on top of that. So one of the things that I've noticed is that the Adobe Spark apps are rated 4 plus, which means they're suitable for those younger kids. They're not going to see inappropriate things. And so that also transfers over into the web-based version. Um, it does require that login, and we talked about the difference between under 13 and over 13 and those requirements. And all of this information, again, is in the Adobe Spark um, education guide, but know that I have heard right from Adobe itself that they are currently working on a, a safe way for us to create accounts for under 13 students. And when they do roll that out, they will be fully COPPA and FERPA compliant. Um, if you're not from from the United States that might not be familiar, but those are things that say we're going to keep our kids safe online, we're going to protect their personal information, and those kind of things. And, and Adobe really does want that to, um, to be part of their uh, platform. Um, also, I would say this is, this is kind of a Suzanne-ism, that whenever t teachers are having students create anything on their laptops, their Chromebooks, their tablets, they should be reviewing that content with them. And one, with Adobe making sure there's no personally identifiable information, no addresses, that kind of stuff in there. Um, as far as publishing, so students can go in and create things, but they're not really public unless you publish them. One of the options you get in publishing says get noticed, and get noticed means they're accessible through um, searches, and so you can turn get noticed off and still publish that. So great way, again, for keeping our students safe. Um, one of the other things that I talk about a lot with teachers and staff at my school is digital citizenship, you know, being good global citizens. And this too comes kind of from the Adobe Guide. They talk about this some, and it's built in. So they, Adobe has built in copyright friendly, free, public domain images that you can search for. You also can import your own images, but if students don't have images to put in, they can search for them. Um, the searches done with in Adobe Spark are Creative Commons licensed and they are tagged as safe. They use a filtering service to help filter their images for safety. 
um, they also have, in addition to images, photographs, they also have icons built in that the students can use in their presentations that are also um, copyright friendly. And so even though Adobe employs a filtering service for their images, it's also that thing that teachers are going to want to keep an eye on that because we know nothing is 100% safe. So now let's take a look at some things. So first of all, there are three parts to Adobe the Adobe Suite. The first format is called Adobe Spark Post. And Adobe Spark Post is a way to create stunning graphics that you could use for memes, posters, signs, and much more. You can pick different sizes. So if you wanted a full-size poster, you can get a full-size poster. If you wanted an Adobe Spark Post image that you could use in social media, they have those choices for you there also. Um, here's some of the features that are in Adobe Spark Post. They have extensive design options and layouts. They talk to professional designers to come up with this. Their um, templates are professionally designed and customizable. You can select different themes and choose your own layouts, colors, and fonts. So you can customize the themes as well as the templates. You can add your own photos or search for those that are built in. Um, they have what they call magic text, and that means you can resize your chat text, you can change the typography, all of those things. You can, again, choose those different size options, posters, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever size you want your post to be, and simple and easy to use with just a few clicks or taps. So here are a couple of examples of some things that have been created in Adobe Spark Post. Um, you could use this to create images um, for science, language arts, math, quotes, classroom procedures. The list just goes on. Um, you'll see the one that says, work hard to get what you want. That was a post that a student did after reading the book, Where the Red Fern Grows, and they were identifying the theme of the book. So Adobe also has one of their other forma formats is Adobe Spark Video. And I keep using the word format. That is what Adobe um, refers to post, page, and video as formats. So Adobe Spark lets you create these compelling animated videos. And they're not animated like a cartoon. They're animated like with transitions and anim animations you might see in um, like a PowerPoint presentation. So things will move in that, which is great, especially if you're using photos. You want that animation, that activity in your video. So uh, Adobe Spark Video is a really engaging way to communicate. You can combine photos, icons, as well as your own video clips can be utilized in there. It's a great way to add, you can also add some impact to your videos by doing text overlay on top of your photos. They have free um, copyright friendly soundtracks built right in that you can add to your video. You can record your own voice narration over each of your slides. If you put in video clips, you can adjust the um, volume of your clips. They have a lot of different themes and transitions and that motion that I, that I mentioned previously that helps bring the story to life. And they're very professional looking. It's not, you know, you're going to look at, you would look at these and go, wow, as you're viewing that. So they're also designed to be short. These are not meant to be like full length productions. They're really designed to be short, which I think is also perfect for the classroom. So we're going to watch an example of a Spark video. And again, as before, when the video appears um, on your screen, you're going to click play. And if you're on an iPad, unfortunately, you're probably not going to see the video, but you would be able to view it later. It's very short, I think less than a minute.
great um, choices there for us. Let me go here. Um, you'll see there's some others in here that you'll be able to access through the live binder links that Peggy will share. And no, Adobe Spark has lots of examples on their website too, so you can go in and see what other um, people are using Spark Video as well as post and page for in their classrooms. So our third format is Adobe Spark Page. And, you know, web pages can sometimes be a little intimidating and difficult to create, but not with Spark Page. And yes, you are creating a, a web page when you use Spark Page. So here are a couple of the details about the beautiful web stories you can create with Spark Page. They, too, have those eye-catching photo layouts that you can put in. You can use your own photos or the ones built in. If you created something in Adobe Spark Post, you can download that and put it on your page. If you created a video in Adobe Spark Video, you can also embed that onto your Spark page. Um, they have a tool that they call Glide Show, and you'll see it's the page just glides along and the photos and the videos and that follow with it. Very, very engaging. It's very fluid and elegant. Um, they have magazine style themes that have professional layouts, colors and fonts. But again, you can customize much of that. Um, it it also, their pages adapt to work on any device. So if you're looking at it on a large screen on a desktop or a laptop or a tablet or a phone, you're going to be able to see the page. It will adjust as you and adapt to that device. And you can use Spark Pages to communicate anything. Your students could do book reports. They could do newsletters, um, create adventure stories, do research reports. And again, I mentioned our uh, communications manager in the district of using Adobe Spark page this year for our weekly newsletters instead of the PDFs that we used to get. So we're going to take a look now at an Adobe Spark page. And this one is called Flipping in Fourth Grade. We do a little project in our district where some teachers are doing flip learning. And they do a reflection at the end of the year. And this is a reflection from her classroom. So I'm just going to go through here quick, or kind of slowly, so you can really see how this glide show, how this motion works in here. And she's only put small amounts of text. You can put way more text in there if you want to. So if kids are doing a report. So it's showing her kids doing some research for a project. They're typing and documenting their learning. They've created presentations that they share in class. So this was a keynote that a student had done about adaptations in fourth grade. And so these were many things that the students had created on their iPads, saved as an image, and then uploaded um, into Adobe Spark. Many of them are pictures coming right from Spark page. And then they're doing their presentations of their reports. But so this is what a page, a Spark page looks like. Um, I mentioned the newsletter. I'm just going to click here real quick. And you can see this was a newsletter from yesterday that our communications director sent out. OK. So that's a good um, introduction to Adobe Spark page. So I have a little bit of a challenge for you. I can see from some of your questions and your comments that you've had your thinking hats on this morning. Um, but I want you to think a little bit again. And how could you use Adobe Spark in your classroom or at your school or office? So think of an example or two. And let's post something in the comments um, chats. So we'll do our thinking here and before we move on. 
and I see somebody asked, can you put links in there? I'm assuming that means to Spark page. Yes, you can embed links to other pages or resources. And someone asked if it's going to stay free, looks like. Um, to my knowledge, Adobe says that it will remain free. They do have, so it's free right now. They do have a little, some premium things that you can pay for. Um, and that helps to get rid of, so you'll see this picture here shows um, the at Adobe Spark logo on there. Um, if you pay, you can have those removed. And they just came out for people that use this for business, where you can put your own branding into your Adobe Spark creations. But I don't think there's anything else that you can do in Adobe Spark um, with a paid version that you cannot do in the free version. Great, Peg is sharing some great links with us. Um, there are so many things out there that people um, like Monica Burns, I saw mentioned before, have, have put out for people to um, help support using Spark in the classroom. Okay, I think we're ready to move on. And let's look at Adobe Spark in action a little bit. Um, I'm going to take a couple of minutes and I'm going to actually go in to my Adobe account and I'm going to create a video. Just I just want you to see how easy it really is to do. Okay, so here we'll go back to my sharing. Sorry, there's always a little delay when you do these things. And I'm going to go here to my Adobe. I was signed in. It signed me out because I hadn't used it for a while. But this is going to take me right in and right into my account. So you see that little banner up at the top? That's where they're advertising their new um, branded videos. But here's some examples of some of the things that I have created. I can load more. And you'll see several things in here that I've done and created um, to share with, with others to post. I've done some videos about those ISTE standards using Adobe Spark that I share in my district. But right now, I'm going to create a little video. And to do that, so I'm logged into my account. I do use my Google log, my district Google login for Adobe. I could have another account, I believe, with my personal Google if I wanted to do that. But I'm just going to go up here now to the plus sign. And I see I can choose from the three Spark formats, post, page, or video. I'm going to do a video real quick. And one thing you'll notice, Adobe will start here, and it'll give you little, as you're waiting for things to change, they give you cute little quotes and that kind of stuff. So here in Arizona, um, it's fall. It doesn't really feel like fall yet here in the desert, but it is fall officially. And so I'm just going to do a little something about fall. Maybe. I actually don't even have to type here if I don't want, but it just says, tell us about your idea or title. You can always change it later. So my idea is fall. I get to choose some different templates if I want. If I'm going to promote an idea, so if I were doing maybe a public service announcement, I might choose that. I can do a, a teach a lesson, an invitation. I usually just go to make up my own. And if you can dream it, Spark can do it. I love that little quote. Keep your eyes on the stars, your feet on the ground, and your hands creating a spark. They're telling me that they have some new themes, and they do go in and add to here all the time. You can watch a tutorial if you wanted to. And there are tutorials and things you can access. So here's where I'm starting my, um, my video. I can go in and I can choose different layouts for my screen. I can also select the theme. Their default is Elevate, but if I want to change it to Grace, I can quickly change my theme. I can go into my different layouts. I can choose some music if I want to select some music that I want to bring up. And let's see, we're going to do Afternoon Porch for this one. You can add your own music too if you have the right to use that music in a, in a project. But now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click the plus sign and notice I can add a video if I have a video to go in here. I can layer some text. I can put in a photo or an icon. I'm going to go to photo. I can upload my own photo, but I can go right here to their photo search and type in the word fall. 
I'm not typing very well today. Don't know what happened there. So you can see tons of pictures in here about fall that I can choose from. Again, all copyright friendly for me to use. So I'm just going to pick one here. Oh, that's a good one. And now, notice there's a plus sign on top of it again. If I click that plus sign, I can add text or put an icon on top. So I'm going to type Okay, fall is here. Notice in the corner it says two seconds. Right now, that's how long this slide would play for. I probably want it to play longer. There's two ways to do that. I can go over here and if I click on it, I can use this slider to make it a little bit longer. The other thing I can do is record narration. Fall is here in Arizona. It might not look like this tree, but we are seeing some cooler temperatures. Easy peasy. Now I can go over to my plus sign and add another one. I can go choose another photo. And I'll just use another fall picture here. Don't know if I'm going to see anything that looks like fall in Arizona, but this, this is a nice one. I like that leaf. Again, I've got my two seconds. I can type some text or add an icon. And I can record. So while it's fall, while it's fall here in Arizona, it's also almost fall break in my school district. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm done. I've added that. I'll do another one. I'm going to put another photo. And this time, I'm going to go in and search for a picture of Houston, Texas. I get some choices here. Sometimes I look and I'm like, I'm not sure what the eye has to do with it, but it's probably something that in the way it's been tagged. I'm going to put that one in. I kind of like that. And I'm going to put an icon this time. And I'm going to search for airplane. And I can put an icon, the airplane on there, and now I can record for my fall break. I'm flying to Houston, Texas to visit my grandkids. Can't wait. So I've just created a video. Okay, so I don't think we need to watch all of that. And you saw on that second slide, I kind of made a little recording mistake in my audio. I could go back and re-record that. So that's kind of how simple it is. It's right here. It's going to stay in my Adobe Spark. Um, if I do want to share it, I can go over here, put in some details. It does make you pick a category. And then I'm going to be able to create a link that I can send to other people to be able to view it. I could embed it in social media. I also have the ability to download. So Adobe Spark posts and Adobe Spark videos can be downloaded and used in other um, presentations and other works that you do. So that's how quick it was for me to create a little video for you. And so now we're going to go back and kind of finish up our morning. And so you've seen Adobe Spark in action. I hope that's sparked some creativity in you in some ways that you could use Spark. And now we're going to take some more questions um, from the audience or answer some questions that have been asked um, throughout um, the morning. Yes, I've collected questions as we've gone along. I think you, you answered this about um, accounts for students under age 13, uh, wondering what's the easiest way to set this up so that the teacher can see or control the accounts. I think you mentioned that, but I, it's worth repeating. 
Yes, and so under under 13, for right now, until Adobe gets their other um, way to sign up students in place, their recommendation is that you create a classroom account. You mm -hmm. can have a personal account, but create a classroom account and log all students into that account. And yes, you can have multiple um, students logged into the account at the same time. Okay. And it puts it, then it does make it nice, especially with younger kids, you can see everything that they're doing. Sure. Is the capability on an iPad to create a spot video the same or different than on the browser? Um, it actually does look the same whether you're um, using a web browser on your computer or if you're using the um, iOS apps on your iPhone or iPad. The tools look, at, look the same. The projects look and the same. Work. You access everything the same. Great. Answered that about numerous students logged in at once. Is there any way to bypass the login for teachers on iPads when using a classroom account? It takes so much time, and and my and this teacher's password doesn't save. Mm. Um, and so I am not. I will be honest. I'm not sure how Adobe Spark integrates with Classroom right now. But uh -huh. I, that's something that I definitely could get some more information on and be able to share it with all of you. Okay. Uh, is there a way to easily publish Sparks to Open Web? Thinking about video and your ISTE standards presentation. Um. So, and I saw someone else said, uh, is everything public? Um, yeah. When you, when you go in and you share and get that link, mm -hmm. you can turn off that get noticed, which means while it's public, someone would, it's kind of like in Google when you say anyone with the link can view. Mm -hmm. So someone would have to have that link or it would have to be posted somewhere on another web page or something. Um, so it means when you turn off that get noticed for students under 13, it means it's not um, accessible through search engines. Okay. So that helps to keep that private student privacy um, in place. I think, does that answer the question, you think? Yeah, yeah I think okay. it does. <laughs> uh, is there a way to format the text? Or is it determined by the theme that you choose? No, the, the text is total is completely for, formatable. You uh -huh. can go in and change what that looks like. You can change the size of it. I mean, they're, they're giving us templates and themes that have some set things in there just to kind of get people started. But you have the ability to um, um, change all of those and customize them to what you want them to look like. OK. You know, it's always possible if someone wanted to use um, a font that was really special to them. It may not be in there, so it has to be what Adobe has in there, but you can customize. Mm -hmm. Can you only download the video if you make the video, if you're the creator? Um, I believe so, unless the creator of that video puts it up somewhere um, in YouTube, or, well, I shouldn't say YouTube, because really you're not supposed to download from YouTube. Um, but if they put it on their own web page or their blog, then they could give people permission to download that. OK. And, and right now, Adobe does not have a way for people to collaborate on creating videos, um, like mm -hmm. three people collaborating on the same one at the same time, like you might do in Google. So it is just the creator of the video. Can you create a classroom account using the same password that you use for an, an original Adobe account? Um, I believe you could use the same password because you're going to have different um, email addresses for it. Mm -hmm. OK. You would need another email address. Yes. You would need a separate email address for, each, for your personal account as well as a classroom account. Mm -hmm. For the educator account, is there a particular spot you have to go to order or create that classroom account? No, not right now. So that is what Adobe is working on, that okay. way to have students under 13 log in safely. So when I say classroom account, it's a little bit different than looking at like a Google Classroom mm -hmm. or some other tool where a teacher goes in and creates a class. So when I say classroom account, I'm thinking just one account where all the kids can log in with, and the kids would be using the same username and password to get into mm -hmm. that account. Yeah, so the classroom, this is verifying, a classroom account really is a personal account created by the teacher. Yes, but being used by the students. 
Okay. I hope that's clear. And I'm really looking forward to Adobe rolling out their this new way of having students log in. I think mm -hmm. it's you know it's going to be really exciting. Sure. Does anyone else have questions for Suzanne? Can you record video within the application? It doesn't seem like it. It seems more like it's. Um, Right. No, you can't. You can add yeah. video clips that you've created mm -hmm. in another tool. You know, you've taken okay. them with your um, okay. iPhone camera or, you know, your webcam or something or a regular camera. You can embed but those in there, but you can actually record that type of video. Okay. Oh, 13 and older, they don't need teacher approval to post? If they're over 13, they can create their own Adobe Spark right. account. Um, and I would recommend using, if you have used G Suite in your, for education in your district, that they use those accounts. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, that does not require any approval by the teacher. Right. So they're, you know, but as always, you know, we want to be kind of monitoring what our students are doing. Sure. And yeah, you can't, you, you you can't, can't approve them. them before they post. And that is true. You can't really, but there's a lot of things that our students do that we don't get to approve. Um, right. You know, so I think my response to teachers is always, you know, if your kids go in and, you know, they have a piece of paper and they do something they shouldn't do on the piece of paper and pass it to someone, kind of the same thing and they didn't ask for your right. approval. Are we going to take the paper right. away from them until they, then they can't ever do that? No, we kind of monitor, we have those conversations with them. And sure. you can always ask a student, I want to see what's in your Adobe Spark account. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can go in. If they're logged in, you can view anything that they've created. Right. So it's better to even have those over 13 use a classroom account? Um, you could definitely do that. I, yeah. I think that could work for any, any students. OK. And again, just keep in mind, it's a great tool for teachers and administrators right. and staff to use. That's a good idea, Kim. Have students mm -hmm. use their Google logins so that teachers can monitor their work that way. Yes. That's always the best option yeah. if you have that in your district. Well, those are the questions that I saw and a couple that came in at the end of the period there. Any other questions for Suzanne? Well, thank you all for letting me be here today and share a little bit. Um, if you have questions, feel free to contact me. Thanks so much, Suzanne. Um, I think everybody learned a lot about Adobe Spark. I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy, who will tell us what's coming up next. Thank you so much, Suzanne. I learned so many new things, even though I saw your slides ahead of time. It was just great having you demonstrate things for us and uh, give us your advice about um, ways that you're using it. I know that everyone can't wait to get started, and it's great to have all those amazing resources in the Live Binder so we can go track it down. I'll add the recording to the Live Binder, too, so that will all be in one place. So thanks again, Suzanne. And we have some amazing shows coming up that you're going to want to come back for. Next Saturday, I am so excited to have Patty Harju joining us to teach us all about breakout EDU game creation. If you haven't heard about that, or if you haven't gotten started trying it, you're going to want to come to that session. It is such a fun tool, not only for students, but for teachers. So be sure and come and check that out. October 7th, we're going to have a special featured teacher show with two fifth grade teachers coming to share some of their experiences in their classrooms related to coding, Michael Foster and Don Donahue. And then October 14th, we're going to do a special show on Picture Book Month with co-founders Katie Davis and Tara Lazar. And this show is going to be special because it's in honor of the founder of Picture Book Month, Diane de las Casas, who did a webinar for us maybe a month ago. And very sadly, she lost her life in a 
uh, fire uh, a couple of weeks ago. So we want to honor her in celebration of her life to let you all know about how you can get involved with Picture Book Month. October 21st, we have the amazing Rustin Hurley coming to share with us. He has done so many things to support students with video uses on nextvista.org. And he's going to talk to us about his latest uh, tips for becoming a better teacher. October 28th, Sarah Thomas is joining us to share all of the amazing things going on with EduMatch. And November 4th, we get to learn about book snaps and gratitude snaps from Tara Martin, the guru of all things related to snaps. And November 11th, Tiffany Whitehead, amazing librarian, is going to join us and share some great information about fake news that you can use not only for yourselves as teachers, but with your students. So I hope you'll come back every Saturday and join us for our shows. And know that if you can't make it to the live shows, we'll always be recording it, and you can catch the recording later. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest. He's gathered all his PD resources in one place, including host your own webinar where you can sign up for a Blackboard Collaborate session. And as long as it's uh, open to the public, it's a free session. You can nominate a featured teacher at this link or from within the live binder. You can also nominate yourself as a featured teacher for a month. The video collection is in iTunes U. You can take the survey as you exit the session. The, the link should open in your browser. And you can also take the link from within chat or from within the, the live binder. Once you complete the survey, you should be able to request a, a professional development certificate. Uh, this is at the bottom of the survey. And it prints out with your name now, thanks to Patty Rothing. Patty sends them out as well. Make sure, though, you request this with a personal email address, not a school email address. Schools tend to block these from getting to you. Our special thanks again to our special guest, Suzanne Sally, to um, Blackboard Collaborate for providing our platform today, and to everyone who participated in the show today. Thanks so much for coming.